Beth, and I'm with the Education Alliance. The Education Alliance exists to mobilize business and community support for public schools, and we are very passionate about helping all students build career awareness and to be ready for future success. And one of the ways that we do that is by hosting programs like this virtual um, internship course so that students can be connected with businesses. And today I'm very excited to introduce Adam Hartley from PCS Go IT. And he's going to be speaking with us today. Just a quick reminder about today's module. The first 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to learn about um, the business and what they do. We're going to stop and we're going to pause for a quick Q&A. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, we're going to discuss the culture. And um, as a reminder, I just want to let you know this training is meant to be interactive between the business and the students. So we want to encourage you to jot down any questions you have. Um, and you'll have ample time to ask those questions throughout the training. So with that, I am going to turn this over to Adam. All right. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, hi, Beth. Thanks for introducing me. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope you're Hello. doing well this morning. Happy Monday. Um, let's see. Can you help me out? Raise your hand if you are in ninth grade. Tenth grade. 11, there we go, 12, all right, good. So at least everyone raised their hand, so that's good. You know what grade you're in. Um, I get a chance to talk to you guys today. I tell you what, it's been two years since I've been uh, in, a, in a math class, or in a classroom, I used to teach math. Um, so I know you guys love math. Um, I can tell that you guys are into it. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things for you guys. Uh, one, um, just, introduce myself a little bit. Um, I, like I said, I, I come to you after being a teacher for um, about 20 years. And so, you know, the first thing that I want to just kind of make you aware of, I work for a tech company, but I don't really do tech all the time, you know, 40 hours a week. Um, and the other thing is to realize that um, just because you start in one industry doesn't mean you can't end up somewhere else. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit today about some of the skills that you may want or need for um, your career and help me out. Let me know. Is my screen sharing right now? Can you see my slide deck? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it just um, the slide deck or is it in presentation mode? It's slide deck. Yes. Okay. Well, let me put it in presentation mode. We can roll from there. Problem with this is um, from my end, I can't see if you're raising your hand or you have a question. So just shout out if you wanna stop me and say something, um, we'll go from there. So Tata Consultancy Services called TCS is probably the biggest company you've never heard of. Um, I'm going to assume that you've never heard of it. Maybe you have, um, if you have, that's impressive um, because until I, uh, heard of it about three years ago and had no idea that it was here. Um, but it is a global technology and innovation company. Um, as I said, I work in a department called Corporate Social Responsibility. Um, so while I work for a tech global solutions company, I actually don't do the tech every day. And I'm going to show you guys all the different things that you could do in our company. But Corporate social responsibility is really just how does our company give back to the community? Um, so it's more of like a, a philanthropy or nonprofit side of the company. And every company out there has that. Um, and so just understand that if you're looking for a job and you say, you know, I, I kind of like the technology aspect of things, but I don't know if I want to necessarily be coding or doing design um, etc. all the time. There are all kinds of opportunities for most companies, even Microsoft, Google, IBM, most tech companies still have a lot of different um, offshoots of their main um, career opportunities. Uh, what I get to do is I work for um, this program we call Go IT, and that stands for Go Innovate Together. And as I said, I used to teach for about 20 years. I taught fifth graders. I taught, taught junior high. Heck, I was an assistant principal 
for a few years um, in my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, um, which isn't too, too far from you guys, I don't think. Um, but I'm up by Cleveland now, whereas my family's home, my wife's hometown. So uh, working from home has its benefits. A lot of offices after COVID, they're starting to edge people to come back. But I kind of live in the middle of nowhere close to an office. So I get to stay home and work, which is nice. Um, but what I get to do on a daily basis is really just work with teachers to work with you guys to teach, um, the foundations of, uh, technology basics like blockchain coding, um, app design, AI models, and that kind of stuff. So I still get to teach a little bit and I work for a tech company. So TCS as we just call ourselves TCS. Um, Tata is actually the last name of a very famous, um, entrepreneur in India. So we are a India based company um, founded TCS was founded in 1968 or so, but we've been around since the mid 1800s. So Tata is a last name in India. If you go to India and somebody says, why are you here? If, and when I say, Oh, I work for TCS, everybody knows what that is. That would be like, if somebody said, um, why are you here? And you said, I work for Google or I work for Ford or I work for, um, I don't know, you name it and people would know Microsoft, right? So Tata is a huge name in, um, in India and, uh, the company has just gone all kinds of different directions. Just like a lot of companies that, you know, of, uh, think about meta meta has gone all over the place with not just started in Facebook, but it's, it's all over the place now. So TCS is a little like that. Uh, like I said, you probably the biggest company you've never heard of. We're what's called a business to business company. So you're probably not going to see any commercials for TCS, but you're probably going to see commercials for people that work with us or we work for. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit of those um, on the way. But, I, you know, I, I say this again, just because sometimes when you're looking at careers and you're looking for things that you want to do, all you know of is all you know of, right? So um, you may not know about companies that are global companies that you can work for here in the United States, or you can start here and you can travel to different places. So if that's ever interesting to you, don't limit your search to companies that you've heard of or that are popular. Um, yes, it would be really cool if I worked for uh, Google or Microsoft or uh, Meta or those kinds of things and did the same things because everybody's heard of those. Uh, but I got a really good job now for a pretty big company. Uh, on the screen, you can see all the different things that we do. And that's that's not all of them. That's just a, a wide variety. So again, we're talking about a career in technology. Oops. Talk about a career in technology. It does not have to be um, doing tech all the time. And we like that. We Obviously, we're based on people who are really good behind the scenes they're coding, they're designing, they're figuring out solutions to help banks and insurances um, and major tech companies, computer companies, not get hacked um, or come up with new ideas. Um, and so I work, I work a lot with the sports sponsorship program. That's kind of my thing. Um, I grew up in high school and I was an athlete and an athlete in college. And now that um, I think I, well, I used to play football, but I'm old now. So I get in trouble if I just tackle somebody randomly. So um, what I do now is I run. And so you guys, a lot of you people have um, heard of marathons and half marathons, or maybe know people who do that or track. I like to do that. And TCS actually is a huge supporter of sports and competitions. Um, so I work with our marathon design team, you know, what I get to do is I get to go to big cities like New York City or Toronto or Chicago um, into marathons that we host or that we um, sponsor. And then I get to work with students in that area. And then the students, I teach them some tech skills and then they come together and they do these really cool competitions. Um, think of like Shark Tank for middle school. Um, high school is involved in that as well. But um, again, just telling you, there's all kinds of things that you can do in a tech company. Um, let's see. Let's go forward. Oh, services that hey, we do. Hey, Adam, I think this might yeah. be a good time for us to stop and see if the 
students have any questions. Yeah, that'd be great. And while they're thinking if they have any questions, I just wanted to ask you on a personal note, how did you find yourself, you know, we're, we're talking a lot about careers and just how did you find yourself switching your career? You said you were a math teacher yeah, and, um, you know, just talk about how, if you do make a switch or maybe what persuaded you or yeah. what prompted that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when you are, growing up and uh, people are asking you, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go to college? I've got a daughter who's a senior right now. And every time people are saying, well, what do you want to do in life? I don't think you have to decide right now what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, I decided to go into education because I like working with students. Um, I like working in education and coaching. Um, and, and that was a good path for me. Um, but for me, that I, I decided I wanted to also be fulfilled in what I did. Teaching was great for a while, but I got to where I was doing the same thing every day, day after day after day, hour after hour. As you guys know, your teachers might teach the same class all day long. And for, for some people, that's great. For me, I wanted a little more variety. I wanted a bigger impact. Um, and so, you know, the money part of things, that's where you have to decide. Obviously, you have to have a job that makes you decent enough money to pay your bills. Um, but for me, it came down to uh, whether or not I was getting paid more or less to switch jobs. I wanted to find something that I was going to have fun doing every day that was different. Um, teaching obviously is a little different every day, but um, this, this job is something new hour to hour, day to day. So um, it was a leap of faith. It was uh, some people said I'm crazy. Some people said, why would you get out of a job that you've been doing for 20 years and taste, take a risk somewhere else? But for me, I decided um, this is where my new chapter was going to start. And as far as, you know, obviously you had a degree in education, but does a company like um, like yours, did they take into account that you had experience, even though it was in education, you were able to switch over? Yeah, that's a great point. And one of the skills that you're going to always want to have in your back pocket is one, you're going to always want to have communication skills and presentation skills and really just um, have good references. So yes, um, I have a degree in education. My company just wanted somebody who could communicate well, um, be, what's the word I'm looking for? Entrepreneur kind of thinking, creative problem solving thinking. And after you've established yourself in a role for some time um, and you start to interview with people, they can gather whether or not you'll be a good fit. Um, so that's a really good point. I don't have a degree in technology. I don't have a degree in business. I don't have a degree in marketing. However, because of the skills that I've developed, um, I can twist that around and Somebody might say, well, you know, I know you want to transfer over to our, our marketing department, but you don't have a marketing degree. And what I can say is, oh, uh, I can market uh, to freshmen how important Algebra 1 is to the rest of their life. So surely I can, market, um, I can market to other people how important our company's products are. So you really just have to take what you do, think about all the skills that you've developed, and then put it into a different place and apply it to a new setting. Wonderful. Thank you for answering that question. Does any of the students have questions before he moves on with the rest of his presentation? Um, they mentioned a couple. They wanted to have some more information about the uh, marketing and what type of platforms or programs do you use or what type of uh, software skills do you um, need on a daily basis to communicate? Yeah, that's a great question. It really just um, depends on where you are in the marketing or the communications. So understand, you know, for mo for the most part, at this point in time, most businesses are like, they're all about LinkedIn, right? So if you're not on LinkedIn, um, you might as well create your own profile. But that's, if you're not aware of LinkedIn, it's basically, it's your, it's your digital resume. Um, and so if you are looking for a job, if, if you say, hey, I wanna work for TCS, the first thing I'm gonna do is look up all your 
LinkedIn and your social media to see what you're doing that applies to the job that you're looking at. Now, platforms that we use, like we said, LinkedIn is business, mostly business uh, people are interested in that. So that's where we put most of our stuff. Twitter obviously is huge um, for us as well. Um, you know, Facebook is, is more of our kind of our, our social kinds of things. So like I said, we have um, TCS is huge on running. So they have their own um, kind of internal Facebook page. Um, we have our own Strava. If you know what that is, it's kind of an exercise um, social media platform. Uh, we are on Instagram a little bit. Um, but that is really not the people we're looking for. So depending on the company and who your, um, who your market is for is who you're going to design your um, social media for. Uh, on our side of things, the teacher side of things, you know, most teachers are not looking for free or cool lesson plans on LinkedIn, but more of a Twitter, kind of an Instagram kind of thing. Um, you know, so we would love to on, you're going to have these debates too. Um, so my side of things say, Hey, you know, I know what teachers are looking at. They're looking at, you know, social media, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, all that kind of thing. And you've got your business side of people who are like, well, we have to keep it professional. So you got LinkedIn and Twitter, and then, um, there's good debates that go back and forth with that. So that was a long answer for a short question. Um, hopefully I got that part of it answered. And the other part was, um, was there another part that I missed? It was just on the, I, you touched it, the different programs that you guys use. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions right now? I'll make sure because uh, I there's a lot of things that I love to do and I love to talk about and I can go on for days, but I also want to respect our time as well. All right. Beth, should I move on? Yeah, let's keep moving. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, so good questions. If you have a question that comes up, write it down and then feel free to ask. Um, and of course, I'll always... Um, leave my information behind as well if you have any other questions. Um, types of jobs, uh, like I said, I, I work for kind of the, the corporate social responsibility side of things. Um, these are all the services that TCS provides, um, kind of more of their tech, tech solution services. Let me see if I can get this to advance. Uh, like I said, TCS is huge. 600,000 employees worldwide, about 150,000 in North America. Um, we are one of the largest um, employees, worldwide employees, um, literally not in the what, but literally one of the largest employees uh, businesses in the world. Uh, give me one second. My dog's being crazy. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry. Advantages and disadvantages of working from home. All right. Um, so what are some careers? You know, we've got the very tech side research and innovation. You know, again, it doesn't mean that you have to be great at um, coding blockchain, you know, all the platforms that you guys probably know better than I do. Um, but it also means that you can communicate well your ideas. You have innovative ideas. You have ideas that um, you think, okay, we may not have the tech right now to do, but when we do, or let's develop that tech, um, we're going to be on the forefront of things. Um, all of you guys have probably seen on a credit card, that little chip there, that's higher security. TCS is one of the innovators that worked on that. Um, so pretty cool kind of stuff there. Um, the digital checking. So if you've got like a check or something like that, and you just take a picture of it on your cell phone and it automatically deposits into your bank account, TCS helped develop that. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, um, these bone conducting headphones. Have you ever seen somebody with a head headphones that are like, they kind of wrap around here 
but they rest on your temple instead of going in your ears. We develop, we help develop that too, uh, which is if you're not sure, why would you not have it in your ear? Well, if it's in my ear, it's plugging up, right? So it's blocking out what's around me, which you might want. <laughs> but if you're running around the city or something like that, um, or if you're swimming and you don't have something in your ears, but you can still listen to music just as good. If you haven't looked up bone conducting headphones before, look that up. That's pretty cool. Um, so just great ideas and they're just tech for good solutions. Um, like I said, I work for corporate social responsibility. Um, there is sales, there's marketing, communications, there's finance. Um, you know, every, every company needs people who uh, can make sure that the budget is in order and people are spending the money that they're supposed to. Tech solutions, um, quality assurance. And then the, the one that uh, you might be real interested in if you're kind of like, I like the tech world, uh, but I also like communication and re building relationships. Part of that, that sales. And then you can see in the second row, the second column, business partner or business client. So people work for TCS uh, they work on behalf of TCS for other companies. So like uh, we work for Jaguar Land Rover. So you've heard of Jaguar cars and Land Rovers. Uh, they work with us. We work for them. Some people work on behalf of TCS, but they work daily with Jaguar Land Rover. So it's kind of like we're like that middleman person um, that uh, is, just holds that relationship in between. Can you grow in our company? Our company is huge, like I said. So there's always opportunities to grow. Every company is going to be a little different. Um, you know, some companies are like, hey, there's an opening jump. Our company is you, you put two years in in your certain role and you start to just build your skills and build your resumes. And once that two years is up, then you can start applying for a different job, a different role and advancement. Um, Salary, uh, everybody is a little different. Ours is based on cost of living where you are. Um, I'm going to say it starts around 80 to 1,000 um, to 100,000 a year plus benefits. Um, and again, it's a global company. Uh, some of the smaller companies may not. Um, what I make now for my base salary, uh, like I said, I kind of live in a rural kind of area. If I lived in a bigger city, um, doing the same job, I would get paid more. So it's kind of cool that they take that into account, but it's kind of not because I'm like, Hey, my friend in Chicago makes whatever more than me just because it costs to live more. So I get that. Um, how else do you move up? You just got to gain people's attention. And you guys know this, um, any of you guys who are athletes, you gain people's attention in practice and then it transfers to the game. Or if you want to play college sports, you, gain people's attention in games, and then you gain people's attention. Maybe some college comes searching for you. Careers are the same thing. Um, you do professional trainings online. Uh, LinkedIn has a lot um, that you can just upgrade your skills and you can put it on your resume and your certificates. Um, and building programs is a, is a huge way to gain attention. You know, it comes back to the basics of, for example, think of somebody who sells cars. Well, the more cars I sell, sell, the more attention I'm going to get, the more likely I'm able to move maybe just from the floor salesman to the head of the department to the manager of the region and so on. Uh, so it's not that different uh, from a lot of other companies. Uh, let's see. Let's get beyond this one. And then I'm just going to pause here because this is kind of my, this is my, my realm. Uh, my realm is corporate social responsibility. Guys, there's a lot of stuff on here uh, that I don't ask you to read or go through, but I think it's pretty cool that um, our little education part of the company um, has affected over 200,000 students around the world. We're in 49 different countries. And we started here in the United States over in Ohio and Cincinnati, coincidentally, my hometown. Um, but what I like about our company is we walk the walk. Um, and so when the reason, one reason I switched from education to working for a TCS 
is that TCS talks about creating um, a future in its community. So this is one of our famous quote, our founder, Jam Sechi Tata said, in a free enterprise, which is what we all live in, um, the community is not just another stakeholder, but it is the very fact of the purpose of its existence. So what I love about our company, and it's, it's something that you can look for, is does your company um, do what it says it's going to do? We invest time and energy into building our future. So when I say I work with students around the United States or North America or around the world, my job is to teach them the basics of technology skills and communication skills so that they can come work for us someday, or at least they're prepared for a future career. So I'm going to pause there and see if there's any other questions, maybe about corporate social responsibility um, or maybe about some of our other careers or opportunities to grow. Does anybody have any questions for him? Would there be any entry level positions for students right out of high school or do you recommend a two year or four year um, certificate or education? Um, yeah, for us, they are going to start with uh, just a basic college degree of some sort, um, associate's degree or something like that. Um, Obviously, you got to get your feet wet somewhere. And our company, again, if you're starting at about 80 to 100,000 a year, which is where we're starting, they're going to ask for a little bit of a foundation, some, um, some experience um, getting into it. Now, again, from there, you start from there, you build your, your resume, you build your experience, and it's really kind of flexible, right? I would rather hire somebody who's been just full on diving headfirst into technology or something along those terms. Um, I would rather dive into somebody who's got two years of experience doing that over somebody who's got a four year degree, uh, but really hasn't done a whole lot to get involved. They just went to college and got their job done. Um, even graduating from high school with uh, these kinds of skills, you're always welcome to uh, apply and you'll usually get feedback from people who say, uh, we really liked what you had. We just want to see uh, a little more of this, a little more of that. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's definitely a ton of careers out there. I will tell you the people at the high school where I used to teach, uh, we've got three people on our tech solutions team or a tech department. And literally all three of them just graduated from high school within the last three years. Um, but while they were in school, what were they doing? They were going to the tech department guys and they were fixing computers and they were upgrading them and they were um, getting getting their hands dirty, so to speak. Um, so they literally graduated high school um, and had a full time career uh, waiting for them just because of the skills that they had created. And I know that that's pretty common around our area, too. Good questions. Any other questions? All right. Very cool. Um, Mrs. Bowden, we are kind of at that, that point where we can do a little activity. Would you like to do a little activity with these students? Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Um, we'll talk about a couple things. So, you know, one thing, like I said, um, I work in what we call STEM. You guys know what STEM is. Um, and my goal is to close the STEM skills gap. All right. So if you imagine, um, a chart and with the number of jobs and technology growing, but the number of people, um, skilled and ready for that job is not growing as much. And what we want to do is we want to close that gap from, number of jobs available to number of people ready. Um, I also want you to pay attention if you are a female or if you are um, kind of a minority in that computer science 
uh, realm, there are a lot of jobs that are just waiting for you. Um, and so, yes, we are going to hire the most qualified, the best uh, person for our jobs. Uh, but we know that uh, good, strong female leadership and innovation uh, is also needed. So um, keep that in mind as you're moving forth. I think uh, we want to dispel any stereotypes that there might be in somebody working in a computer science kind of field. Um, when we talk about the gaps, there's a lot of different gaps, right? So there's the fundamental skills gap. That's what we just talked about. Guys, two, almost two and a half million STEM jobs unfulfilled every year just because the people are not skilled and ready to do that. Um, there's the belief gap. Like we talked about uh, people who don't believe that you can do this job. So many young people, people uh, in high school feel like, oh, well, I'm not ready yet. So I can't really get in there. It's not my thing. I can't do that. Or geography gap. Uh, again, I told you guys, I, I kind of live, I live right between two big cities, Cleveland and Toledo, and there's not a lot around me. So you can, you can guess, you know, farming, farming and um, small town. I live in a big, very uh, touristy kind of town on Lake Erie. Um, so again, people trying to open up their eyes that you can do this. Um, you can do this just doesn't mean that you have to uh, do what you might think stereotypically a career in computer science is. Um, but what I did say is one of the things that you're always going to need is good communication skills. And so whether you are interviewing for a job or whether you are trying to convince people that you've got a great idea for um, new technology or how to do things, the way that you present that is a huge um, advantage. Um, if you go into an interview and somebody's just answering questions, yes, no, yes, no, give me an example of when, and then they're not really good at convincing, you're going to get this job if you can convince people uh, that you're the best for the job. And, and so how do we do that? Um, you're pitching yourself. You're trying to sell yourself. So I want you guys to look at a couple things here. One of the things I do in my Go IT program is teach students presentation skills and pitch skills. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Um, I know we don't have a ton of time to get through everything, but um, I want to show you guys just some examples. So I'm going to show you two examples of videos. All right. One of them was created by uh, my teammates, the people that work for Go IT, um, a few years ago. And they are presentations that somebody might give. You guys have seen Shark Tank, right? I'm assuming you've seen Shark Tank where people stand up and say, hey, judges, and they try to like sell their idea and get investors. That's how we close our programs with teaching students how to pitch their idea and our students create like an app, uh, tech for good app. So I'm going to show you two videos. One will be um, with some certain pitch skills. And then the second one will be with other pitch skills. The, the second one is a, a group of high school students presenting at like a teacher conference. All right. So as you watch this video, and if you've got something to write with, or if you got your computer in front of you and just want to open up like the notes tab or a, a word or keynote and just take some notes down, write down things that you see, like uh, what are strong things? What are weak things? And then we'll talk about what you saw and what we can do differently. All right, so strong versus weak. What does the PowerPoint look like? What are the presenters doing with their bodies? What are they talking about? And do they make a compelling argument for their product? Let me see if I can get this video to play here. And let me know if you can hear my screen. Can you guys hear that video? Not really. Okay. I'm going to try to, I've got my volume up. If, it, if you can hear it at all, that's good. Um, then I don't have to share a sound, but you might have to turn your volume up because it's not very professionally recorded.
the impact. We think it don't stop. Um, uh, the problem. What problem we are addressing? Basically, we are just addressing the problem that that want to lose weight. Think of your app as your own personal trainer. Whatever, whatever. It's not. Okay. So our solution, our app is basically about trying to help people like in this case it's health and doctors so and battles and stay healthy. We got options as a reminder to health tips and, and fitness tracker. We also add a various amount of fitness options with user as many options with their choice. Oh, okay. Um, uh, we think adults can use it and they can encourage their kids if they think it's useful for them. Also, to benefit overweight people that don't have time to go to the gym and are always on their phones. We think that this app will be a great way to work out without leaving the comfort of their own home. So we have some competition. Uh, all right, I'm going to pause it there uh, because there's probably another minute or so left, but I think you've got the idea. Um, so what did you write down? Um, let's start with PowerPoint presentations. Um, now you watch this and you go, these people are terrible, right? Uh, but I bet you've seen these same somewhat kind of presentations in your school and uh, whether or not the teacher teaches the heck out of how to give presentation skills, sometimes it doesn't matter. And I'm not saying anything about your teachers because it worked the same way with me. I would teach my students how to do their presentations and they, they were math presentation, problem-based learning, um, final presentations, um, and it still wouldn't matter. So let's start with the first. What does the PowerPoint look like? I know it's kind of hard to see here, but what's what's the problem with this presentation slide? You can just yell it out. I can't maybe I can't hear you, but maybe um, our teacher, can you help relay? What's the problem with these presentation screens? Well, it, it's just words. Uh, Too wordy, um, not <laughs> engaging. Yeah, very good. Right. Yeah, they literally they put everything on that screen. Um, that you would want to know. Um, and we know better than that. We want you to be the feature of your presentation. All right. We don't want, if I'm watching you and you're trying to convince me, I don't want to have to read through a screen. I want you to talk about it, bullet point your main ideas, but I want to focus on you and you want me to focus on you. What about their body language? What's going on there? What's some of the problems? Reading off cards, they just want one person on their phone, not content speaking. Not yeah, have you guys ever seen this? And listen, I'm I get nervous too, and it's taken me a long time to get past kind of my public speaking nervousness. But uh, definitely, you see people their backs to the um, audience, they're reading off the screen, um, they're like their nose is in their note cards, right? And you got that person on the phone. Uh, yeah, so do, I'm not even sure exactly what they're talking about. Did you notice the interaction from group member to group member? Did anybody notice what was going on there? How about the, the girl on the left? Do you, think, uh, do you think she's a team player there? Do you think she's dividing up the teamwork? Probably not, right? So we all have that person, maybe it's you, <laughs> that you have to do teamwork with and you're like, listen, I know how it's done, just let me do it. Because the other people are kind of afraid to do it wrong because you're gonna jump their case. Um, or you're just kind of like, fine, if you wanna do it, do it. So one thing, a huge thing that we know when you're presenting or, or you're working as a team is just being able to be open and share your ideas and share whose turn it is to present. Um, so good, all good, um, all good observations there. Let's look at an example of maybe a different. Speech and now listen, this isn't like the 10 out of 10 or anything like that. There's still some things a little bit of this one. Wait, you should try our study cafe. This app not 
only helps you so for, to study for any science exam, it also lets you socialize with your friends. Wow, study cafe is amazing. <laughs> okay, we're the Coffee Music Co. And the app we're presenting to you today is called Study Cafe. Study Cafe is a unique AP Science study app that incorporates a virtual world aspect to study. Study Cafe promotes a simple interactive study for AP exams through a proven game-based education model. This app provides students with audiovisual flashcards to study with, personalized quizzes for practice, and competition among friends to keep them very motivated. Study Cafe will be offered in a free demo version with advertisements and an ad-free version for 99 cents. Study Cafe all right, we'll pause there. So are these people still reading from their presentation? Yes. yes. Yeah. Do they have everything memorized? No. But what did they start out with? Did anybody notice the first thing that they did with their audience? If you've seen Shark Tank, you, you see a lot of this as well. What they start with is what we call a hook. And you've probably seen this before. You probably have teachers when you walk in the classroom, they go, hey, watch this video real quick, or they start off the class with a, a hook or a way to grab your presentation. Uh, sometimes comedy is good. Sometimes um, acting a little scene out is good. Um, but one thing that we love about their difference, again, it's not that they're 10 out of 10 shining stars and they still got some practice, but they grab your attention right away and they relate to you right away. So as, as you're moving on, as you're thinking of your career skills, you can practice this all the time every day, whether it's just your friends or your teachers or maybe somebody that you're interested in. Think of a way to connect with that person right away. Ask questions, find out more about that group. And then they talk about, OK, you've got a problem. I've got the solution. Um, and then they go on and they give examples of that solution. Um, and what we do is uh, we talk about things that we can do when we are creating a pitch. Look at your slide right here that's showing. Um, we talked about that number one introduction. We kind of called that either the hook or the introduction. See if you can go through here, and we don't have a ton of time left, but see if you can go through here and you can figure out where the matching would be through here. What order you would go through a presentation if you are pitching something or if you're trying to convince somebody that you've got a great idea, even if you're giving a presentation of a project in class or like a science fair. I don't know if you guys do science fairs, but um, some, some, some places still do. They do STEM fairs and final pre presentations. So we got introduction is first kind of like, hey guys, my name is Adam. My name is Beth. My name is so-and-so. And this is what we're doing. What do you think would be uh, one of the other first things? You can just yell it out. Hook. Yeah, good. So I was I was gonna kind of guide you that way. Your hook. Yeah, your hook is the next thing. What is the hook? Is what? Which one is the of these are the hook? Something interesting to grab the audience's attention. Exactly. Right. So you want to relate to somebody, grab their attention right away. Um, after your hook, your introduction, you want to get into what you're doing, right? Please you look Should I go on? Sorry about that. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's to bring black flashbacks from your days in the classroom, Adam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not having a fire drill right now, right? No, just an update okay. on grades. <laughs> okay, very good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what we should be looking at, and you can see your first three are kind of interchangeable. What's the problem? Get your attention. Hi, my name is, and from there you go into now you know the problem. Here's your solution. Here's who your solution is for. Your target market. Who cares about it and why? Your future ventures, um, this is like, okay, this is the solution that I have, but in the future, it would be really cool if we could do this, this, and this. Uh, there are other people who are trying to do what we do out there, and this is why mine is different. As we know by this point, there's pretty much nobody has 
excuse me, an original idea. Um, but when you do, you say, this is how mine is different than some of the other people who are trying to do this. Um, let's see, uh, or I miss your target market, your future ventures, and your ask is the last part. Again, when you're interviewing uh, for a job, it's the same kind of process. So this is what I bring to the table. This is my future goals. This is why I'm different than other people you might interview. And your ask is going to be things like, well, what are you looking for? And you kind of show them that you're the person that you're looking for. Um, and you also, if you're presenting a product, you say, this is what I need for you and us to partner together. Um, if we had more time, we would have practiced this, but uh, I, I love that we use a lot of our time with just asking questions. So I wanted to make sure that we wrap things up for you guys. Is there anything else that maybe you have a question on? We were going to do this little presentation. We're going to let you guys create your own idea and go through the pitch. But I'll leave it there and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let you guys see if you have any other, any other questions. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for your time. Um, and I know that uh, there's a lot going on with you guys right now. It's spring. So spring sports are starting up. You got competitions. You got prom coming up. Um, I don't know if you guys have Sadie Hawkins or not or even know what that is. Um, but you got a lot going on. So I appreciate all of you guys for what you're doing. Um, if you need anything, you can always come to us. Uh, but hopefully you got something out of this today that at least maybe breaks down some stereotypes that you might have about the computer science world um, and maybe gives you something to take um, into either some of your other classes or your career journey. Thank you so much, Adam. That was a really uh, great training module. Thank you. I especially love the part with the, the pitch at the end and how to do a great presentation. It's definitely an important skill. And it seems like in Pretty much every job that you have at some point, you're going to have to put yourself out there and to present and do talking. And um, it's just an important skill to have in most careers. So really appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you guys being a great attentive, attentive audience and um, especially on a Monday morning. Yeah. And I guess if there's no other questions that we can say goodbye for the day. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Good. Yeah, you guys have a great day. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Take care. Have a good week. Bye-bye.